we have Dr. Rajesh Sinha. Dr. Rajesh, uh, Professor Rajesh Sinha uh, was one of the first uh, few persons in Northern India to start glued IUL. And both of us has done a uh, lot many cases. And uh, he is in cornea specialist, so his combined is glued IUL procedure or a scleral fixed procedures, a lot of corneal procedures like uh, PKs, DSEC, and rehabilitated those patients uh, which previously we thought were uh, not amenable to surgery. So we'll listen to Professor Rajesh now. Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, Gupta, for involving me in this uh, IC. It's a wonderful uh, IC, very close to my heart. Uh, I have no financial interest. Now, when we think about doing uh, any SFIOL, or any glued IOL, or any method of SFIOL with uh, coronal procedures, this means that the person is either a phakic with endothelial decompensation, or he is having uh, a, a phakia with corneal scar in the center, or he is having pseudophakia with coronal decompensation or scar with IOL in unacceptable position. Now, by IOL in unacceptable position, I mean to say that if it's a descended PC IOL, tilted, hanging in vitreous, PC IOL in anterior chamber, AC IOL with, you know, almost touching the endothelium, and uh, uh, in all these scenarios, you have to explant this IOL, and uh, the most appropriate technique, in my opinion, is a scleral fixation or an intraskeletal haptic fixation of IOL or a glue, glued IOL technique. And the corneal procedures that one can combine is that if it's a corneal scar, central scar, then you can do a full thickness graft. If it's just an endothelial decompensation, you can do an endothelial uh, graft. And uh, amongst the endothelial graft, these days we prefer either ultra thin DSEC or DMEC. Now, in such scenarios, I would prefer doing an ultra thin DSEC instead of DMEC because many of these cases they do have a little bit of sinecure, a little bit of inflammation, some vitreous here and there. So you have to do a lot of manipulation. In such a case, unfolding of uh, the DMEC graft may be difficult. So ultra thin DSEC in studies have shown that it provides a nearly similar uh, quality of vision as DMEC and provides a very good vision and is quite, can be safely done. Ultra thin means that the donor lenticule is less than 100 microns. So. Uh, as I said, that this technique can be combined with a full thickness graft. So uh, I'll just move on and tell you what are the salient things that one should think of uh, when you are doing a full thickness graft. Now, it's an open sky technique. So when you are doing an open sky uh, fixation, if you have a reasonable clarity, you can do a fixation even without opening the cornea, even without doing the trephination. But if it's a scar, then you can do an open sky. So you have to use uh, mannitol beforehand and you should ensure that the pressure of the eye is very well controlled. It's on the lower side. And then only you can go ahead and do it. All these flaps, etc., are made before you do a corneal trephination. And then uh, once you have done the trephination, you fix the lens and then you uh, put the donor lenticule and, uh, and uh, uh, put sutures and secure the graft in position. Now, this is one of the pictures of a PK with uh, glued IOL technique. Now, if the endothelium is diseased, as I said, ultra thin DSEC is a good option. Now, when you're doing an ultra thin DSEC, you require an air tamponade to maintain the uh, DSEC lenticule in its position. And for that, you should have enough space between the lens and the, and the, uh, and the DSEC lenticule, and that is why in such scenarios, uh, as a cornea specialist, we don't prefer using any iris claw lens, or we don't prefer having an AC IOL because uh, it will be closer to the lenticule, and studies have shown that the endothelial uh, graft, uh, graft endothelium, uh, endothelial loss is higher in those cases. So uh, that is why we prefer doing an intraskeletal haptic fixation. And the IOL, the technique should be such that the IOL should be quite stable. So this is what we, uh, we did a study on UBM study, and we found out that this is an intraskeletal haptic fixated IOL. You can see with the movement of eyeball, the lens is absolutely steady. It's not moving, the pseudofecotinesis is negligible. So but this is something which encourages us that this technique is good because if you have less pseudofecotinesis, there will be less of uh, the uh, turbulence in the anterior chamber and uh, the endothelial cell loss will be lesser. But uh, 
if the IOL is not stable as we used to do the suture fixation, if the IOL is not stable, if there's a, a lot of pseudophagodinesis, then in that case, the risk of endothelial cell loss is higher and uh, that is why intraskeleptic fixation technique is preferred. Now, uh, this is a donor lenticule which is fashioned, so the anterior lamella is fashioned in the micro uh, keratome and then this is the uh, posterior lamella which is less than 100 microns, so it's uh, ultra thin uh, desec lenticule. Then for the uh, lens fixation, uh, my technique is slightly different. As I said, we published in Journal of Cataract and Refractory Procedures uh, Surgery, wherein this procedure was published. What we normally do, it's a very uh, uh, a technique which is very user friendly. You just mark the sclera at 1.5 and 3 millimeter positions, make two scleral incisions, and then dissect the uh, sclera and go beyond the uh, the second incision so as to create an uh, uh, tunnel uh, at the same plane. So the advantage of uh, dissection is that you have a tunnel at the same plane as this stromal bed and uh, the uh, you can place the haptic easily, you don't have to stain. And then you remove this, uh, the IOL, uh, the IOL which was already there and causing uh, uh, touch to the endothelium. And then uh, uh, another multi-piece IOL is being introduced in position and the tip of the uh, haptic is held and exteriorized, the same being exteriorized on the other side. And uh, once you exteriorize both the haptics, you can tuck it into the groove very easily and uh, we have done multiple and when you put a glue, you put, you see to it that even the, uh, the start of the tunnel, this intraskeletal tunnel also has some glue over there so it sticks well and it remains in position and after that you can do all sorts of manipulation. And this is the uh, desec lenticule which is uh, being introduced with the help of a bucin glide and uh, air is being placed. Uh, in, in many such scenarios wherein you have a bad uh, trauma to the iris, you have to manage the iris as well, you have to do a pupiloplasty and uh, this is one case wherein the pupiloplasty was done along with the intraskeletal haptic fixation, this is the post-op picture, along with a desec lenticule, so the uh, clear, reasonably clear cornea with a uh, fixed IOL in position. Now, when we started doing this technique, we had some issues of hypotony and uh, some inflammation in the post-op period, and then we started thinking that uh, if we have a case like that, shall we divide it into two stages, like the first stage, you do it, uh, you just remove the IOL which is uh, tilted or touching the endothelium and do an intraskeletal haptic fixation, and once the eye becomes absolutely quiet, then you can place a desec lenticule wherein you don't have any inflammation and it uh, really uh, improves the, the success rate of the desec lenticule. And this is one study which we did. We found out that uh, both the techniques are effective. The, there is a procedural ease in the two stage, particularly in eyes with sinicae and vitreous in anterior chamber. Rebubbling was more noted when you combine the technique, you do it in a single stage, because you are manipulating the risk of hypotony and then you have a risk of uh, donor lenticule detachment as well. Graft survival, survival was better in sequential group wherein you fixed the IOL first and then did the desec. In whenever you are doing an ultra thin desec in such cases, we normally we don't do a venting incision in the cornea these days. But in such cases, you have the risk of hypotony, so you do venting incision along with the air tamponade. This is the result that we uh, have sent for publication. This is one of the pictures, uh, post-op picture. This is the study that we published in Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery earlier. And to conclude, this technique is a little challenging, but yes, it is very much feasible. Uh, only thing is that you have to be careful, you have to judge. Now these days what we are doing is that if it's a very nice round pupil, no sinicae, nothing, no, not much of a risk of inflammation, you go ahead and combine both intraskeletal haptic fixation with ultra thin desec. But if there is some sinicae, if you have to do pupiloplasty, etc., then in that case you dissociate the two techniques, do these uh, intraskeletal haptic fixation first, let the eye become absolutely quiet and then place the desec lenticule, you will have very good results. And as I said, uh, venting incisions in, in these cases is, it provides better results than if you don't do a venting uh, incision in terms of the uh, endothelial uh, lenticule attachment. And um, 
uh, with this uh, technique, we have found out that the results uh, of the of the lenticule detachment, etc., and the graft survival is quite good. Thank you very much for your patient listening.